Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to design and animate the popular Vox style using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. We're going to talk about the creative process and how to design with animation in mind. I will have several tips along the way, and if you'd like me to further elaborate on something, drop a comment. Now for the Photoshop portion of the video, I do refer to my Wacom tablet, which is what I have here. This is a digital tablet that allows me to give my designs more of a hand-drawn look. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, I left an affiliate link in the description below for you to check out. So let's get started. All right, so what we're looking at here is our artboard. And if you're unfamiliar with artboards, basically what they are from a motion design standpoint, it is a frame by frame layout of what your actual animation is going to look like. That's a little bit of an overview. If you are unfamiliar with artboards and you're in motion design, you should definitely practice your Photoshop, practice your Illustrator because it will make you an overall more valuable motion designer. What we're looking at here are our first slates. So the, as you can see, the first, second, and third slate, they're pretty much the same design. The only thing that's different are the photos and then the locations. After these three animated, we will go to our title slate for the name of the segment or the series. This is a a faux Vox thing. I don't work for Vox, but um, I would love to do a freelance project for them if I could. But this is the, the title slate of the series, followed by the name of the episode, The Telescope. So I'm gonna show you how to design this first artboard here. Once you know how to make this first one, making all of these is gonna be simple for you. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to the stock photo itself and um, just gonna unselect that, go to the original. The first thing I'm gonna do is just right click Duplicate layer, okay. The reason I do that is because I always like to have the original available. That way, when I crop people out or replace the background, I can kind of reference it. How realistic does this look? Does this look too Photoshop? So I use that as a, uh, as a measuring tool. All right, so what we're gonna do here is actually use AI to start. And that might sound a little intimidating. I promise you it's not. We're gonna go and just keep it simple. We're gonna select, select subject. So. Uh, it's picking up basically what's in focus and usually it'll pick up people. It also picked up part of the telescope here. So what we're going to do from here is click our um, quick selection tool and then we're going to zoom in. And we are going to add to this. And I'm highlighting over things. I have too much, so I'm going to just hold down alt. I'm gonna just deselect it. This is a pretty timely process. Say we wanna get in some really fine edges here of maybe the telescope. I'm just going to hold on shift and then I'm going to use my Wacom tablet. I'm just gonna outline it. And I'm just gonna to add to it here. So, you know, with an object like a telescope, when you have like these legs and then you have all of this detail behind this was not shot in front of a blank background or green screen or something that could that I could quickly key out so this this took a long time and but I wanted to show you this example because the more time you spend on it the better your overall product is gonna look so I'm just going here just cleaning things up and doing some more right here this can take a lot of time I'm showing you the lasso tool method just because it's kind of like a last resort. Your quick selection tool is gonna to do a lot of it for you. So I'm just going here. It's picking up as best it can. So here it's a little hard to tell. So um, for Photoshop, so I'm gonna go back to lasso tool, hold down all out. So this is kind of the process here of how to crop something out. And as you saw in the example, we have our the, the kids and the telescope cropped out and it's all in one file. Um, they're not cropped out separately. I'm just gonna skip ahead here to the next part so you see what we what we do from here. So now we have everything highlighted. You see the marching ants around the, uh, the kids and the telescope. So what we're gonna do from here is actually mask them out. So the proper way to do this is to add a little bit of feather to them. That way you don't have those harsh edges when you crop them out. So I'm gonna go to select, modify, feather. We're gonna leave it at 1.5, click OK. And that just feathered the edges. You, you can't even tell from the marching ants, but that just feathered the edges of what we're cropping out. And then from here, when I click this mask button below, it masks them out. This is the overall process of how you're gonna crop the kids out. But now what about our background? Because we still have, even with the kids removed, we still have our original background here. So what we're gonna do from here is actually remove the kids from the original photo. So in order to do that, we're gonna to go to our masked layer. We're gonna hold down control, click, 
and we are back to the marching ants. Now what we're gonna do is select, modify, expand. And we're gonna do it by 10 pixels. So right there, just I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better. When we go to select, modify, expand, when I expand it, you, you will see a change here. And see how those just expanded out a little bit? That's helpful because if we were to move the subject right by the edge, even if it's feathered, we might get some weird edges and things like that. So we just wanna avoid that altogether. So now what we're gonna do is click on our um, original photo here, and we are going to use generative fill, and we're gonna say remove people, type it in. Wow, that was clean. So now we have three different options to work with. And you see from the edge of the telescope, it kind of looks a little bit weird on that, on that third one. Same with the second a little bit. The first one looks the best, so we are just gonna keep that. Um, but just something to keep in mind if you're trying this at home and you see some weird edges, uh, you might just wanna actually expand out different parts of your, um, your image a little bit more. And I was very precise with it. You don't even have to use the exact mask that you use. You could even just draw a circle around and give it some prompts. So try some things out, see what works best for you. And what we're gonna do here is actually combine these layers. So I'm gonna right click, merge layers, and now we have two photos. And so real quick, um, just to show you a really bad example, but if we were to animate this in and then animate maybe the kids a second after, we now have that flexibility to do that. Whereas before we had the kids in the photo and it would look a little bit weird because they'd animate in and then a copy of them would animate it in so it just wouldn't look as clean. So that's why we took them out all together. All right, so let's get into the design part of it. So the next thing we're gonna do is create our mask. So I'm just gonna uh, hover over the rectangle tool and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag down. If I don't hold down shift, it's gonna form a rectangle. So I'm gonna hold down shift, drag this down. Awesome. We will label this mask. And if I wanna see where things are looking, I'm just gonna drop down the opacity a little bit. See, look, okay, okay, I want maybe this to be a little bit larger. Hmm, maybe a little bit shorter, but over there, cool. All right, this is looking good so far. Um, so now I'm gonna bring my opacity back up. I'm gonna drop it down. And right now it is below, it's between the, the, the isolated kids and the new background layer. Now what I'm gonna do is actually bring it below the background and I'm gonna hold down Alt and see this little arrow icon pop up. So what this is for is actually, it's going to basically, if you're coming from an After Effects background, it's going to alpha mat. It's going to put everything outside of that box into the box itself. And we're only gonna see the stuff that's in this box. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click, boom. That's where that is. And it looks really, this is a really cool effect because we have part of the image in there, but then part of the image out of there. So this is, you're kind of seeing where we're going from here. I'm gonna duplicate this mask. I'm gonna bring it up. And I'm gonna bring it above the background. And we're gonna hide it real quick. So now what we're gonna do is give this a little bit of color treatment. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on the isolated kids. I'm gonna to go to image, adjustments, black and white. Now, personally, this is something I still like to do more so in After Effects, but I'm just showing you how to do it in Photoshop. We have all these settings come up here. I'm just gonna stick to the default and click okay. And then I'm gonna do the same to the background, black and white. Awesome. So now what we're gonna do is make sure that our background is connected to our mask. And then we have our yellow square here, which is just a duplicate copy. I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply. And now you're starting to see some of the magic and where this is coming from. It's, it's starting to come to life a little bit. Uh, so what we're gonna do from here is we're actually going to create those uh, lines that were drawn um, on the sides on the edge of our yellow box. And what I'm gonna do from here is create a new layer. And then I'm gonna to go to my paintbrush tool. Um, I'm using one of the Kyle uh, dry media brushes, um, which are really popular. I wanna go here. I'm gonna go here. That's looking good. And um, the reason I like using the Wacom tablet over the mouse is because Photoshop will actually adjust to how much pressure I'm putting down on the pen. So when, uh, when I use the mouse, it's just the same similar stroke. But when I use the tablet, I could start off light 
or I could go hard and it'll adjust. So that's why I use the tablet over the mouse for drawing lines like this. But next thing we gotta do is label our layers. We're gonna label this drawn lines. We're going to bring this below the kids there. That way there's just a little bit more dimension before they were over and it just, it looked like it was slapped on and we're just putting it below there. So now things are coming to life even more. So we have these drawn lines. Now what we need to do is actually create our little call out. So we had our call out here um, and I'm gonna do that with our pen tool. I'm gonna change the fill to no fill, change the stroke. We'll leave it at 10. We're gonna click up here, click down, and hold on shift and click across. And we will label this call out line. Next, we're going to write our location. For this, I'll put Germany. And then we will change this to the Bebis, Bebis, this font. I don't know what to call it. Placing this on top, plop on top. So now when we go to our artboard here, you see, okay, that's how I created the first slate and that's how I created the second and third. Now let's go to artboard four real quick. Super simple. Um, what I did was is I typed out our word telescopes here and then I uh, created our drawn lines and then I um, created our, just using the rectangle tool and um, some bold text. So very simple, very clean, very minimal. Uh, same thing with Artboard 5 here. The same thing we did for the first one. The only difference is that in Artboard 5 is that the photo is on the right side of things. So let's jump into After Effects. So we just brought our Photoshop layers into After Effects. And the first thing we're going to do is animate our Design Slate 1. What we're going to do to start is I'm going to get position keyframes for my isolated telescope, overlay square and square mat. I'm going to go to a second, bring them in again. Then we're gonna go here, back to the start, animate these out. We're just gonna isolate these for now too. All right, so here's how it looks to start. Now this looks pretty boring, so let's spice it up a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna do is on every one of these, we are going to go to our flow plugin and we are going to apply the circ uh, default uh, setting. This is what that looks like. Now, part of what makes the animation interesting is that the keyframes are actually offset. So what I'm gonna do is, it's really simple. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is go to where we have our spike in our, in our graph editor here, and I'm going to create, I'm gonna press Alt in bracket, so it starts right there, and then I'm actually gonna offset the, uh, the layers themselves, so they animate in all at a different time. And we're gonna um, just hide this overlay square for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the background and we're gonna bring it in at six frames in and just see how that looks. Okay, it's looking good. Now I kinda wanna bring in our isolated telescope in a little bit sooner. Nice, I like the way that's looking. So it's just a little bit offset. Had we kept our photo the way it was originally with the kids and telescope in the shot, this would look really weird because you'd have people in there and then another copy of them on top. So that's why we took them out so we could do this little offset. All right, now I know we uh, animated the overlay square. We actually don't need to animate it, uh, animate its position because we are going to animate its scale. So I'm gonna take my uh, anchor point tool and it's the snapping is on and I'm gonna take my anchor point. I'm gonna bring it down here. Awesome. Now when I scale from here, it all scales from where that anchor point starts. So I'm gonna click here, set a keyframe, then go to about here, click another keyframe. This is what we have. So we need to make some adjustments just to line this up a little bit better. So I'm just gonna to continue to offset the keyframes a little bit. Awesome. Could bring this in probably a little bit faster. All right, this is looking better, but there's still room for improvement. So what we're gonna do from here is add some sauce. 
So I'm gonna go here to the position keyframe at a posterized time, six, drop it down, wiggle, two, 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 comma, two. And what that does is that it makes it look a lot choppier, which is that Vox look. So there's a few things that Vox does that uh, that's really unique. One is that their animations don't always start from beginning to finish, meaning that you're not gonna see the entire object or frame or word on frame from when the animation actually starts, which is why we split these keyframes. And now what we did with that expression with the posterized time and the wiggle is that we brought it in and it's looking a lot choppier, kind of like you'd see in a stop motion animation. And it has a slight, slight little wiggle and we can adjust these values a little bit if we want. Maybe we wanna do 250 just to see how that looks. So it's animating the speed followed by the amount. What we're gonna do is copy expression only, paste it in the scale and in the position here. So when we turn these back on, here's what we have. Now, what I don't like is how this overlay is like on and off the edges. And I know that it's doing that because of the wiggle that we put in. Um, so what to, to combat that, what we're gonna do is actually scale this up higher what I'm gonna do is actually math this to the square mat. Um, turn that back on. Now we have these first three things animated in and it's all by just offsetting a couple keyframes and, and adding a few, a few simple expressions. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna bring this telescope out a little bit further. I like that. And that's the other thing about offsetting keyframes. It's I know I offset the keyframes first, but the timing and pacing of everything is going to change when you add this expression. All right, so just so we could see it better, I'm going to just change the background color of my comp to white. So we animated in our first few objects. Now what we need to do is animate the hand-drawn lines, our callout, and the word, and then also animate everything out of the frame. So let's get to it. So what we're gonna do from here is we'll start with the hand-drawn lines. What I'm gonna do is create um, a stroke and I'm gonna zoom in here, create a point, create a point. I'm just gonna look. Okay, it's close. There we go. I'm gonna say selected on my shape layer, create another point, hold on shift, create another point. That one is a little bit off, so I'm just gonna to go to contents, bring that down. Now I'm going to add a trim paths to this. I'm gonna put a keyframe on my end and then go up about mm, half second or so, animate it in, apply flow. And we're going to label this drawn lines mat. Bring this down and we are going to mat it. And that's how it's going to look like that. So that's what we have. Now I think it's coming a little fast. So we're going to just bring that out a little bit and we're going to bring it in a little bit later. Hmm, a little bit sooner. All right, I'm liking the way this is looking. All right, next is our shape layer. So what I'm gonna do is I just had this in Photoshop as like a reference. I'm gonna recreate this. So what I'm gonna do is just hide that. I'm gonna go here. Um, so right now my fill is to nothing and then my stroke is at 10. I'm gonna go here, click there, hold on shift, then have a straight line right there. And then I'm gonna change this to black. And just how we did uh, the reveal for the hand-drawn lines, we're gonna do the same thing here, and we're going to add a trim path. So I'm gonna trim path, animate the end. Now, if we wanted to animate the start, we could, um, but um, we're, for this, we're gonna animate the end. We'll go back out just to see our timings looking. So I wanna start this about right here. Go up a little bit. Apply flow. So that's way too fast. Let me. All right, this is looking good. Um, one small issue we can fix is that, so this is our call outline. 
I could see my call out line and we're gonna label this black. So I'm just gonna drop this below so it's hidden behind there. Now what I wanna do is actually create a little bit of an offset with the colors of the call out lines. So I'm gonna duplicate our black one. We're gonna label this yellow. And we're going to change the color of this to yellow. Now what we're gonna do is actually bring the black on top. Look at the keyframes here. And we are going to have the black start about two frames, let's say three, three frames after the yellow. So the yellow is gonna start, we'll just label this yellow and the black is gonna go next. So, and that's how you get this cool look with the offset uh, offsetting lines. So this was something that we didn't uh, necessarily design in Photoshop, but it's a nice aesthetic touch that I like to do and add to my animations when I can. So. Uh, and with these, I'm actually going to add a motion blur. Next thing we wanna do is animate our word. So because we brought in a Photoshop file, this is presenting itself as a Photoshop um, document. But what we can do with uh, text is we can right click, and go to create and, cre and convert to edible text. And what that did is I'm able to actually change the text to anything that we want and still have the same look, style, size, everything. So that's a nice little hack uh, when it comes to working between Photoshop and After Effects in case you weren't aware of it. What we're gonna do with the word is we're actually going to bring this in from the bottom. So I'm gonna start here, the position, go up a little bit, set another keyframe, bring this down, apply flow, spread this out a little bit longer. Okay, this is looking better, but what I wanna do is similar to how we add an expression uh, to our objects. I'm gonna add the same to our word. So I'm gonna copy the expression. I'm going to paste it here. And all right, this is looking better. And another thing we're gonna do similarly is that we're actually going to cut the layer at the halfway point where the spike is in our animation in the graph editor. So I'm gonna start here. There we go. So just to look at the full thing, it's barely moving up um, and I'm okay with that. Before I had it go a little bit higher, but now it's just barely jumping up and it has a little bit of a wiggle just like our photo. Similar to how we brought things in by offsetting keyframes, we are going to animate things out by offsetting keyframes as well. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to highlight everything, click P for position, set a keyframe. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start to move things out. I'm gonna go pretty far here. All right, now what I need to do is um, highlight all of these keyframes and apply flow. Here's what we have so far. Um, now, of course, not everything comes off screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop these layers at the, at the halfway point of the animation and then we're gonna offset them so it, so it trickles off. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's bring this up here. Then with, we'll bring our Overlay square, we'll go one, two, we'll do that. Next, then we'll do our square mat. Go up another two keyframes. So here's what we have so far. This is looking better. I'm gonna go up two more keyframes. I'm gonna um, get our black line, one, two. Now our yellow call out line. Actually, I like that one to be up three frames, and then we're gonna go one, two. Awesome. Oh, and our hand drawn lines. We need we need to offset this as well. So we're gonna just bring that up. Awesome. Now that we've offset everything, we want to start splitting the actual layers um, at the halfway point in the animation for when they animate out. So we'll just start from the bottom here. Same thing, just gonna go one at a time.
Now this takes some time to do, but um, things it just looks so much smoother when you offset these keyframes. When you animate everything in and out together, it looks a little bit boring. So doing it this way just adds a little bit of spikes to it, and that's part of that box look. Things aren't meant to be perfect. But there's a little bit more sauce we can add to this. And what we're gonna do is do a little bit of a focus pull like you'd see out of a lens or maybe out of a telescope. I don't know, I don't have a telescope, but we're gonna go to layer, new, adjustment layer. We're gonna label this blur. Change the color of this just to make it stand out a little bit. We're going to add a camera lens blur. And now what we're gonna do is start to um, play around with the strength of the blur and go up every two frames. So I'm gonna just select a keyframe there, go up one, two. Um, set one for 10, one, two, one, two, five, one, two, 15, one, two, 10, one, two, five. Right. We're going to highlight them all, toggle hold keyframe. So this is just a nice little touch. It adds a little bit more sauce to your edit with, with, the, um, with the focus pulling. And what we're going to do is actually duplicate this. And we're going to bring it to the front just to see how it looks. All right, so here's what we have. We have all of our objects animating in with the focus pull. And then subtly they animate out all the same way. And as you can imagine, we are going to animate all of our slates like this. Um, from one to the other because we designed them the same we want them to animate the same We want to be consistent, but let me show you guys just a little bit more sauce uh, that you can add to your toolkit when it comes to making box looking animations, so uh, We're gonna go to our render comp here, and we have this white solid. We're just gonna label this background I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm going to label this grid and Then I'm going to add a add or I'm gonna add a grid effect. I'm gonna change the color to say like a gray. I'm gonna change the size form to width slider. Bring this up to about here. Change the border size. And then what we're gonna do from here is click on the position, type in posterize time six, followed by wiggle 200 comma three. Now we have our little grid background, but it's taking up a little too much space. We can't really see our hand drawn line. So we're gonna make this just a little bit more subtle, but still there. So what I'm gonna do is pre-comp this grid, label this grid, and then I'm going to create a blobby looking mask. All right. We're going to feather this out to let's say 600 or so, maybe a little bit less. We're gonna drop the opacity to about 30. And now we have this cool graph paper looking thing in our edit. So this is how we're gonna animate the rest of our slates. So I'm going to animate the rest of them and we will jump into the next step. All right, so here's what it looks like with all of our design slates animating in and out. We have the same consistent look where it looks a little bit choppy as it animates in and out. And we also cut the layers in between the actual keyframes within the animation. So this is what we have so far. And the way it's looking right now is like a nice little loop. So now it's time to show you how to animate the series slate and this episode slate. So we will jump into our series slate here. I'm going to create a null object and we will just call this scale just so we know what it's doing. I'm gonna convert our telescope's uh, Photoshop layer into edible text. And what I'm gonna do from here is parent, well, I'm gonna parent everything to our null object. But I'm only gonna show our telescopes to start. So what I wanna do from here is have a starting point and then I wanna stop the animation at about 12 frames in. And I want it to stop where it currently is. So I'm gonna just boost this up to about 300, say even 200. We're gonna highlight them, apply flow. So this is what we have so far. And I'm going to split this telescope's layer in half. So right now, here's what we have. There we go. So it's just a short, abrupt 
little animation. Uh, one th other thing I want to do with this with this null object is I'm actually going to apply our expression from earlier, our posterize time six wiggle two 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 comma two. So now it has that slight little wiggle that we had before. All right. So now what we're doing is focusing on the word explained here and how we're going to animate that in. And we have this rectangle here. I'm just going to create my own rectangle with our pen tool. I'm going to change the color to the yellow that we have here. And I'm going to expand the size of the stroke. Awesome. I'm going to delete the original. We will label this explained rectangle. Cool. So if you remember from before how we kind of animated in the hand drawn lines, we're going to do the same thing, but now with the word explained. So I'm going to parent this to the, our scale null. So it all comes in the same way. I'm going to add a trim path and then I'm going to start it at zero, put the end point and then I'm going to go up to 12, bring that in, apply flow. Here's what we have. All right, this is looking better already, but I want to have that choppy look like what we have with everything else, but with the actual animation of this trim pass. So what I'm going to do is add a posterized time effect and drop this to about six. Here's what we have. It's looking better. Maybe let's see what 12 looks like. So the next thing we want to do is actually stylize our rectangle a little bit. It's a little bit too, uh, I would say, kind of boring. Um, it has these straight edges. So what I'm going to do now is add um, a rough in edges. And we are going to play around with some of the parameters here. So I'm just going to mess with the border, the scale, just make it look like it's a little bit more hand drawn. And it takes some fine tuning to do this, but it's honestly worth it. Now what we need to do is actually animate in our hand-drawn lines. We knew what we did before with our hand-drawn lines and our design slates. So I'm going to basically outline all of these hand-drawn lines and uh, create an alpha mat and then add a trim path to it. So it's the same process as before. We're going to parent this to our scale null, which we'll leave at the top here. We will call this drawn lines mat. And what we're going to do is actually take the trim paths from our rectangle um, right here. We're going to paste it onto our drawn lines mat. So this is how things look like right now when animating in. Just looking at the timing of everything. Might bring that out a little bit further. All right, now what we need to do is go to our drawn lines, bring this down, alpha mat, our drawn lines to our drawn lines mat. That way, that's how they animate in. Boom. So now what we need to do is animate this out. So what we're gonna do is go to about the three second mark here, set a keyframe for the scale, go up to 12 frames in, and I'm going to bring this down to 50. We'll highlight both keyframes. We will apply flow. After we apply flow, we're going to go to about six frames in here and we're going to cut everything. So everything animates on and then now we have everything animating off. Cool. Now it's time to animate in our episode slate. So our last slate here. And what we're going to do is similar to before. We're going to create a new null object. We'll label this scale. We're going to parent everything to the scale. Press S, go up 12 frames, set two keyframes. We'll start it at about 200. And just so I could focus on one thing at a time, I'm actually just going to hide these layers right here and just focus on the word to start. And we'll hide our hand drawn lines as well. So we're just focusing on the word right now. We're gonna apply flow. So here's a nice touch I wanna add. I want to draw a mask around the word V. So here's what we have. I'm going to duplicate the layer 
invert the mask, and I'm going to bring it in two frames after. So here's what we have. And we'll relabel these. And what we're going to do is with their null, we're going to add our expression from earlier. So next thing we're going to do is animate in our, our actual telescope layer here. And so what I'm going to do is go to our overlay, go to our anchor point tool, bring this down to the corner. Awesome. And I'm going to click scale, go up 12 frames, leave another keyframe, bring it down to zero, apply flow. It's the same formula. Now we animated this in, this is looking good, but what I want to do from here is kind of like how we did with our words, I'm going to have the other images flicker on. Awesome. So this is looking really nice so far. I like the how it's like choppy and it's frame by frame. All right, and now we just have to uh, animate our hand-drawn lines. So we have these lines here, same thing as before. I'm just going to bring these in. And we're gonna go to our series slate from before, and we're gonna get our trim pass from earlier. We're gonna bring these in here, just paste them in. Call this draw on lines mat. Bring it down. Mat them, and now we will mess around Oh, we also need to parent our mat to our scale layer, but perfect. So we have our words flickering in, and then we have our actual overlay box starting. And then next comes in our photo of our telescope and our telescope background, followed by the hand-drawn lines coming in as well. And I really like this match cut here between the actual the words and how things animate out and then animate in to start. Now there's one last thing I want to show you guys that I think is going to be helpful. So we'll go to one of our design slates here. So we have our blurs and what I actually want to do is add a blur to our overall render comp for uh, between these last two slates. So I'm just going to go here and I'm actually going to add this a little bit to the beginning as well. So by adding those last little two touches, it just looks so much cleaner and I love the way that looks. So this is how you design an animated box looking opener. If you guys found this video to be useful, please consider leaving a like, comment, or even subscribing. Thanks for watching and stay creative.